So my stepdad's sweet birthday gift seemed perfect until I found a hidden camera inside. Yeah, but just when I thought he was spying on me, the truth behind who planted heard my world upside down. For my 18th birthday, my stepdad gifted me a clock. When I discovered a hidden camera inside, I fled, suspecting him, but later found out the new assistant was responsible for spying on me. I'm 18 and live with my mom and stepdad Joshua. My mom married Josh six months ago, after a rough divorce with my dad, who had an affair. It was a messy situation, and now neither my mom nor I have any contact with him. Josh has been a family friend for as long as I can remember. I never suspected he had feelings for my mom, and I don't think anything happened between them before the divorce. Growing up, I called him Uncle Josh and spent time at his dental practice, so it was a bit of an adjustment seeing him as a father figure, but I always liked him, and he makes my mom happy, so I went with it. Yesterday was my birthday, and I usually don't make a big deal out of it. I went to school, then hung out with friends. It was a nice day. When I got home, I was surprised to find out my mom and Josh had planned a surprise party for me. This was quite a shock because my mom is usually terrible at keeping secrets. I walked in to find my mom, Josh, Aunt Kathy, and my little cousins ready to surprise me. It was actually quite nice. We celebrated with cake and my favorite foods and everyone seemed happy. And about that Versailles. Then came the time for presents, which is where things took a turn. I opened gifts from my cousins and Aunt Kathy first. Then my mom and Josh gave me concert tickets to one of my favorite bands. I was thrilled because I had been saving up for ages to buy a ticket with my part-time diner job. Um, it felt like the best birthday gift ever. After my aunt and cousins left, I went to my room to tell my best friend about the tickets. I was in bed chatting with her when Josh knocked on my door saying he had one more present for me. I was already so happy with the tickets that I couldn't imagine anything better. Josh brought out a huge box and I tore into the wrapping. Inside was a pink wall clock with little strawberry decals. It was cute but seemed underwhelming compared to the concert tickets. Nevertheless, I was grateful and placed it on my study table. Josh asked if I liked it and I said yes. He was really happy and mentioned that the concert tickets were my mom's idea but he wanted to get me something special on his own. My room is decorated in pink with lots of strawberry themed items so the clock fit perfectly. I appreciated the thought and thanked him again for being so considerate. He wished me a happy birthday once more and left. Feeling sleepy, I told Amy I was going to bed and would talk to her the next day. She had been on the call and heard Josh come in asking what he got me. Owen told her it was a clock. She insisted I show it to her. I promised to send a picture the next morning, but she was persistent. So I agreed to take a picture and send it right then, even though I didn't want to get out of bed. And so she would have to settle for a terrible dark picture with my flash on. My study table is right beside my bed, so when I'm lying down, I can just barely reach it. Feeling extremely lazy, I decided to stretch out and snap the picture from bed. That's when I noticed something really odd. My room was pitch dark. I don't have any night lights or fairy lights because I need complete darkness to sleep. Um, so I grabbed my phone, opened the camera, turned on the flash, and aimed it at the clock. So that's when I saw it. A small bluish light on the clock. The time flashed in a soft pink, but there was a noticeable blue light. So I found it strange but didn't think much of it. I took the picture, sent it to Amy, and tried to sleep. I was almost asleep when I remembered something from a movie or TV show and instantly sat up. I glanced at the clock again, did a quick search on Google, and attempted to take another picture, this time with my front camera. Guess what? The same blue light confirmed it. There was a hidden camera in that clock. In case you didn't know, you can detect hidden cameras using the front cameras on most phones and sometimes even the back camera. I'm not sure exactly where I learned this, but I'm a huge fan of crime documentaries. So maybe I picked it up from a show or something. I was convinced there was a camera in that clock and it was recording me. I felt a knot in my stomach. I didn't know what was going on. Why would Josh give me something like that? Someone might have been watching me right then and there. That thought snapped me out of my shock. I got up, threw the clock in the trash, and when I returned to bed, I was trembling and confused. I didn't understand what was happening. It all seemed surreal. I didn't know what to do, so I called Amy and woke her up. I explained what happened, and she was just as freaked out as I was. We stayed on the call for a while, and she suggested I call the cops because clearly Josh was some sort of creep, and who knows where else he might have hidden cameras. The thought made my stomach turn. I considered going straight to my mom and Josh to tell them what happened, but I was so confused and scared at that moment, it almost felt like a nightmare. Amy and I ventured online to locate a particular clock on a dubious website. After some thorough searching, we finally found it. The site was filled with eerie surveillance gadgets and similar items. The most unsettling part was spotting stuffed animals there, which made me even more uneasy since I own many stuffed animals 
some gifted by my mom and Josh over the years. It made me wonder if any of them could have hidden cameras. I began feeling like everything in my room was watching me. It was one of the most distressing experiences I've had. Sir, of what else to do, I gathered all the stuffed animals that I hadn't bought myself, along with the clock, stuffed them into a trash bag and got rid of them. Feeling physically ill, I decided to just sleep it off and handle it in the morning. I took some melatonin, played some white noise, and tried to sleep. I don't remember when I fell asleep, but I know it wasn't much, so my mom woke me up shouting my name. Disoriented, it took me a moment to understand that she was yelling about the wall clock. She said Josh found it while taking out the trash that morning and was deeply hurt by my actions. I took a deep breath and told her to give me a moment so I could explain everything, confident that she would understand why I was relieved to have thrown it away. She called me an ungrateful brat, saying I wasn't worth the effort they put into making my birthday special and demanded that I apologize to Joshua immediately. Before I get into what happened next, keep in mind it was very early in the morning just before 7 a.m. I had a rough night and barely slept. My mom's agitation put me in a bad mood too. So when she told me to apologize, I snapped back that Josh was lucky I wasn't reporting him to the police for being a massive creep, but my mom lost it and slapped me. I was shocked. In 18 years, she had never raised a hand to me and now she did it over a man. I was offended and deeply hurt. The full reality of the situation hit me and I started to cry. My mom thought I was crying because of the slap, but it was more than that. I was overwhelmed and needed her support, but she only made things worse. She saw me crying and said there was no point in it, that I should have thought before acting like a brat and throwing away a thoughtful gift. So that that was the last straw. I got really angry and yelled that she should think twice before defending her husband. Um, Ati, they should worry. Last spot, we should take a bit negative. She got even angrier and warned me to be worse, to be careful about what I said next. I had enough. I got out of bed, grabbed my phone and car keys, and asked her if she knew where Josh got the clock from. She thought I was implying it was a cheap gift, which wasn't the point at all. As she started to say something else, I told her I'd had enough and didn't want to hear it. I pushed past her, ran to my car, and drove away. She followed me to the driveway and tried to stop me but I was quick enough to get away. I drove to a nearby diner and sat there for a while trying to figure out my next move. Knowing I couldn't go home, I called Amy and she told me to come over to her place. So that's where I've been since the afternoon. Amy and I decided to confront my mom and tell her the truth. So we sent her screenshots of the creepy site where the clock was listed. So I sent them to her and waited. About an hour later, I started getting calls and texts from both her and Josh. I didn't want to talk to either of them, so I ignored the calls, but the texts were all apologies. They both said they were ashamed of how they acted and should have given me a chance to talk instead of lashing out. They offered to explain if I gave them a chance, but I honestly didn't care. I couldn't see how this could be explained or made okay, and I definitely didn't want to go back home. I texted my mom, telling her to stop trying to reach me because I wasn't interested in hearing her out. She replied with a long message saying that Josh was innocent and would never do anything like that. Apparently, the wall clock was bought by his assistant, Peter. Josh did want to get me something for my birthday, without mom's help, but didn't care enough to pick something out himself. So he asked Peter. Peter is a new guy working for Josh for the last few months. Josh hired him fresh out of college, so he's not much older than me. Since Josh's practice is nearby, he sometimes sends Peter to run errands like getting his lunch, and he has even come to dinner, so I've met him a few times. He always seemed kind of creepy to me, so it wasn't a big surprise that he would try something like this. She never even tried to talk to me directly, and I had no reason to believe he was capable of doing something like that. So my mom's text said they wanted to call the cops on Peter, but wouldn't do it without my permission. She also said she would leave Josh because he put me in this spot with his carelessness. That shocked me because I know my mom really loves Josh, so it must have been hard for her to say that. So this finally made me call her. My mom sounded devastated. She had no idea about the camera and incredibly guilty for not believing me earlier. She kept sobbing and apologized a million times, saying she was sorry for everything, especially for slapping me and not listening when I needed her most. She said she just wanted me to come back home so she could apologize in person and make things right between us. I told her I still wasn't ready to see her but asked if she was sure it was Peter and not Josh who bought the clock. She said she trusts Josh. I told her I was still not comfortable living in the same house as him and she said I was more important to her and if I wanted to she would get separated from Josh. I told her I needed time to think. Also, I got a million missed calls from Josh, but I didn't pick up any of them. He texted me many times saying he can prove that Peter bought the clock and that he had no idea it had a camera. He also said my mom wasn't speaking to him and begged me to hear him out. He said he loved my mom and me as a daughter and would never do anything to hurt us. So that's what my day has been like. Amy has been my rock and said I can stay with her as long as I need. 
It's just her and her grandma at their house, and I know her grandma well, so I'm sure she won't mind me staying until I figure out my next move. My mom has even tried to reach Amy, but she didn't pick up. It's not hard to figure out where I would go in a situation like this, but I hope she doesn't actually show up at her door. I feel really guilty and conflicted. I think maybe I should hear him out and see if he actually has proof, but at the same time, I feel scared and unsafe at the thought of seeing him. I don't want to destroy my mom's marriage over a misunderstanding but I'm wondering if I'm doing something wrong here. Amy says I should do what feels right to me, but I'm not sure at all. Update one. I did not expect to become Reddit famous overnight. The response to my post has been overwhelming with so many questions and comments that I haven't even had a chance to read through them all. But I have some major updates to share first. The morning after my post, my mom and Josh showed up at Amy's place. I wasn't surprised. I told my mom I didn't want to see Josh and that they should leave, but she begged me to hear her out. She was very emotional, clearly having been crying, and even Josh looked rough. Feeling bad for them, I decided to hear them out once. First, let me clarify that Josh was not lying about Peter picking out the gift. He showed me text between them. Although there was no direct text about finding a gift, there were messages from Peter saying he found the perfect item and a picture of the clock. It looked like an ordinary clock, just like when I first got it. Josh had told him to order it and send the invoice to the office. The conversation was basic and nothing seemed suspicious. Reflecting on my interactions with Peter, nothing major stood out. He had just been a little creepy, like catching him looking at me, but I never thought much of it. I told mom and Josh about this and they were furious. Josh kept apologizing, saying he failed me and put me in danger and that he would never forgive himself. By then, I knew it wasn't his fault and I wasn't angry at him anymore. I agreed to go back home with them. I can't believe I almost ruined their marriage over this. It's gross to think that some random creep was trying to spy on me and the thought of him seeing me gives me chills. This whole situation is a nightmare. We decided to go to the police. We have enough proof to ensure Josh isn't caught up in the investigation and he's to do anything to get me justice. We're going to the police tomorrow morning. The clock is still in the trash because we don't want to alert Peter if he's still watching. So I'm nervous, but at least I have support. I hope they catch him and teach him a lesson. I'll try to post an update. Some of you suggested not trusting Josh, thinking he might be in on it with Peter and now trying to shift the blame. I understand your concerns, but I trust him. Peter has been a creep for as long as I've known him. Even if Josh were capable of such a thing, why would he involve Peter, someone he's only worked with for a few months? So I checked the text on Josh's phone and the timing between messages. It didn't look like any were deleted, and Josh showed me the transfer of money to Peter's account for the clock. He had no way of knowing where the clock was bought from. All of this makes me feel like I can trust Josh. I'd rather give him the benefit of the doubt over Peter. Sure, Josh should have been more careful and picked out the gift himself, but that doesn't make him a criminal. Peter wouldn't take the fall for Josh because there's enough proof to get him in trouble. If Josh was involved, the investigation will reveal the truth. Regarding how Peter knew I would like that kind of clock, Josh mentioned that he told Peter to look for something pink and preferably with strawberries. It's not a hard guess for anyone who knows me. I love pink and have a lot of strawberry themed. It's just part of my personality. Um, but instead of focusing on that, we should be more concerned that these products even exist. A, and many of you have asked me name the site where the clock was bought, but I don't want to cause trouble. However, you can easily find it if you search for hidden Kim clocks online. Amy and I found it pretty quickly that night. Update two, we called the cops on Peter and he got arrested. Thank you to everyone who offered advice and support on my previous post. After reading your comments and discussing it with my mom and Josh, I realized I couldn't just let this go. So I felt shaken and scared, but I knew I needed to act to protect myself and possibly others. And I talked with Amy and realized he might be doing this to other girls, maybe even minors, which made me more determined to stop him. Um, after having breakfast and gathering my thoughts, I decided to call the police. My mom and Josh stayed with me for emotional support, I explained everything to the dispatcher, the hidden camera, the suspicious clock, and my confrontation with my mom. So they took it seriously and sent two officers to our house to take my statement. The officer was very understanding and professional. I was nervous about how it would go, but the officer just asked me to describe the clock in detail and any other suspicious items. He asked about my interactions with Peter and I told him everything I could remember, though there wasn't much. I also mentioned the website where Amy and I found similar spy devices. The officer assured me they would investigate thoroughly. So we shared the text exchanges between Josh and Peter, showing that Josh asked Peter to pick out the gift. The officer said they needed Josh to go with them for questioning. Josh agreed immediately, reassuring us that there was no need to worry and that he would be back soon. After taking my statement, the officer asked if I felt safe staying at home 
and if I had any friends or family I could stay with, I told him I trusted my mom and Josh and felt all right. He told me to contact them if I felt unsafe. They also needed to search our house for other possible hidden cameras or suspicious items. The police conducted a thorough search, particularly in my room, but found nothing besides the clock and some stuffed animals I had thrown away. Peter claimed that none of the other items were bought by him, and my mom confirmed that most were bought by her. The police went through them but found nothing suspicious. They didn't find anything else in the house, which visibly relieved my mom when the police confirmed there were no other objects of concern. Josh left with the cops and came back after a few hours. When I asked what happened, he said it was all routine. They asked if he wanted a lawyer, which he declined and mentioned he might be called in again. The cops also wanted my mom to come in for standard questioning the next day and needed me to come in too for paperwork and other details. Peter was arrested at his home and is now under investigation for invasion of privacy and related crimes. I don't know much about the ongoing investigation, but I hope he confesses or they gather enough evidence to convict him and prove Josh wasn't involved. It has been an exhausting day and I just want all of this to be over soon. My mom and Josh have been very supportive, giving me space to process everything. And we've also hired a lawyer whom I'll meet tomorrow. I'll try to provide an update, but it might take a while as I need time to process everything and wait for more definite development. Update 3. It has been four months since my last update. I've been really busy, so I apologize for the delay. First, Peter was found guilty and we pressed charges against him. He didn't put up a fight and admitted to buying the camera clock without Josh's knowledge to spy on me. So the only silver lining is that we found no evidence of him doing anything similar in the past. Since I was a minor when Peter first started working for Josh, he didn't bother to delete his search history. What the police found, the site was surveillance devices on his computer. More disturbingly, they also discovered that he followed me on almost all my social media using fake IDs. I had no idea about this and it really creeped me out. He admitted that he had a crush on me when he first saw me, which is extremely creepy because he was an adult and I was only 17 at the time. The police didn't find any evidence of him doing anything except following me on social media while I was still a minor. He said he knew he couldn't approach me directly. So when Josh asked him to pick out a present, he came up with this disgusting plan. I don't even want to think about what would have happened if I had not noticed the camera that night. Since he had no prior convictions or criminal charges against him, this was considered a misdemeanor rather than a felony. Despite our efforts to charge him with a felony, he only spent a few days in jail before being bailed out. I am quite disappointed with how things turned out, but at least his actions are permanently on his record. That's all I can tell myself. Over the past few months, I've been focusing on school and getting into college. I am also going to therapy to deal with the trauma of what happened. I am grateful to have my mom, Amy, and Josh supporting me through all of this. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.